Hyperland in the current landscape of W Roots compositors for the average user is by far the best. Yes, Sway is a great reference implementation of the W Roots library and shows you how to do stuff in a really overkill way. Yes, Wayfire is doing some really cool stuff with compiz like animations. Yes, River is really cool, it is lightweight, it has this powerful layout system, Hikari also great, it's serving the FreeBSD world, and DWL is doing the DWM thing for some reason, not entirely sure why, but it does have its fans. We could keep going on and on and on and on. There is a lot of projects out there doing really cool things, but it's very important to keep in mind that most of these projects and Hyperland is absolutely no different here, are run by individuals. Yes, there might be some extra contributors, but most of the work is done by a single person. And recently, Factory put out this post, Come Help Shape Hyperland, which I'm partially talking about because he specifically mentioned my name, but also, considering how much I use Hyperland, I felt like I should give it a bit of attention. Although I don't like complaining about working too much or burnout, there are points at which it is fair to speak up about such issues in my opinion. For me, as I approach two years without a single day of a break in developing Hyperland, I believe that entitles me to open up a bit about how it's been from my side. So welcome to that one rant about working all the time by a random dude online. I have, on many occasions, discussed the stories of developers who just needed to step away. They'd been working on a project for 5, 10 years, and their project does really great things. And maybe it's used by companies like Netflix and Google and Amazon, and they just... They're just sick of it. They just need to step away, and some of them so much so that they never want to come back to open source just full stop. That's not where we are going here, but everybody needs at least a bit of time to vent. I've known Vaxru for quite a while now, and when it comes to development, to put it in the nicest way possible, he is an absolute psycho. This is an actual picture of his GitHub contributions. Here is it on GitHub. 2,962 contributions in the last year. Basically every single day, with the exception of these four right here, have a contribution. And on those days, he's probably responding to issues and pull requests and things like that. Every other day has at least a commit. And if it doesn't have at least a commit, it likely has more than one commit. And it's not just the main Hyperland repo. There are things like Hyperland Wiki, Hyperland plugins. He'll show up in various other places as well. According to this, 28 other repos over the past year. And it's not just for my issues and my merge requests just because he knows me. He is very, very quick at responding to these. I don't know when he sleeps. He shows up to my stream sometimes. It'll be like four in the morning for him. He'll disappear for like three hours and then be in Discord again. I don't know how much sleep he gets, probably not enough, but he is always working and has been doing incredible work for these past two years. Throughout those 21 months, I've written over 100,000 lines just in Hyperland alone. Alongside, I've been moderating my Discord server, making YouTube videos, managing my personal life, enduring a lot of hate online, doing sport, and going to university. In the free time I'd find, I'd play some games. It's generally a lot of things to be doing at once, and I'm not surprised many would question how I find time to do all of this. My answer is, I don't really. I don't know how he manages to do what is here, let alone, like, actually doing things well. Like, sure, you could do a lot of things, but a lot of them are probably going to be done pretty terribly. I don't get it. Somehow it's happening. Although it's been somewhat of a dream of mine to be helping a lot of people by making software they enjoy. After some time, it all comes at a price, sanity, health, and private life. This is probably going to be the case for any sort of BDFL-style project, benevolent dictator for life, in the cases where that person is still an active developer on the project. Take, for example, the Linux kernel. Linus is in more of a management role now, not doing all of the development himself. If he was, that would be wild. But a lot of projects, the person who started the project, the person who runs everything, is still the person who is doing most of the work. And at the rate of something like Hyperland, that's a lot of work. What I've been doing. For the longest time, 
I just do the littlest things when I was at my lowest point. Review a merge request or two, write a small commit or something to tidy something up. That's still a lot of work when you just don't feel like doing work. I've always had a mindset, and still do, that my state should not really hamper Hyperland's growth too much as long as it's possible. I'm fine with sacrificing myself a bit for the greater good. That's also why for a long while now, I've been prioritizing plugin related issues. Plugins are a great way for me to delegate some of the development burden onto other people. Features never implemented, either because I didn't feel like they belonged or I didn't want to, are being implemented as plugins. See amazing stuff like Hi3, HiCov, and HyperGrass. All of these are really, really cool extensions. So Hi3 basically adds I3 style manual tiling. I am not a fan of manual tiling. I like dynamic tiling. I just like the positive deciding where things need to go, but I understand why you might want this. HiCov, this is another one that I wouldn't find myself using, but basically what it does is adds this sort of like overview window selection mode so you can instantly jump to another window. And Hypergrass is kind of a pun, but this adds touch gestures into Hyperland. It's really hard to focus on specific issues too. I don't have a moderator on GitHub, and as such, there are tons of dupes and poorly worded issues. Issues aren't labeled properly either, so it's hard to sort through them. The only metric I can reliably sort by is likes. Or if someone bothers you about it in your DMs and is like, Hey, Factory, you should probably fix this problem. Hey, here's the logs. Have fun with that one. <laughs> So then, what to do? At the current state, taking a break is almost impossible for me. Hypeland is entirely ran by me, however you want to look at it. There are some repeat contributors whose MRs I highly value. Dick B, the JCH, Memcher, Mighty Plaza, just to name a few. But they are nowhere near a level at which they would be suitable replacements during a vacation of mine. All of their contributions combined would not even amount to 5% of my contributions. And this isn't flexing, this is just the way that most projects work. Obviously, at the scale of something like Hypeland, it is a lot more noticeable, but even a fairly small project, generally the person who started it is going to be the one who contributes the most. It is very, very rare for somebody else to take over a project. Things like WL Roots are absolutely an exception. And then things like Gnome, where they have really strong contributions from a lot of different people, are even rarer. And the kind of project the Hyperland is just doesn't do itself any favours. It is written in C++, very complex language for a lot of people. A lot of people just have no idea what they'd be doing with it, where to even start, they need to learn the language from the beginning, and that's going to be a giant undertaking. And then it's a whaling compositor. Yes, it is built on top of your roots, which makes it a lot easier than doing something entirely from scratch. But building a whaling compositor is going to be very difficult unless you have experience building another whaling compositor, which is a fairly rare skill set. And if you have it, you're probably working on another whaling compositor. You can obviously learn it, but it is a big barrier to entry. And that's why I'm turning to you. The community. There's a lot of you out there, and I'd estimate more than 100,000 people use Hyperland in some way, shape, or form out there in the world. I haven't started collecting telemetry yet to back up with data though. If you believe you have what it takes to write C++, try it out. Try picking out an issue from the over 666 open ones at the moment, and have a stab at fixing slash implementing it. As Hyperland grows more and more, more and more use cases need to be considered, and as such, more and more bugs are found. Many are easy fixes, many are not. If you're a new developer, maybe a student, contributing to Hyperland is also a great way to build up your experience with working with big projects and something to possibly put on your CV. If you prefer, try and make a plugin. There are a lot of simple plugins you can take a peek at to better understand how they work. Also check out the wiki for a tutorial on how to get started with plugin development. I've had a read of this, it is fairly well written. The more MRs are made, the more my burden of maintenance is eased, as all in all, reviewing MRs is less time consuming than writing the code. Obviously, writing the code is going to be a giant help. 
But that doesn't mean you can't get involved if you don't know C++ or you're not willing to learn it. There are also projects like the Hyperland Wiki, and I don't know a single developer that likes writing their own documentations. So if you happen to like writing things and you want to better document Hyperland, this is a great project to get involved with. Along with, of course, issue triaging. A lot of these issues do have comments on them and there is some sort of discussion about getting the problem dealt with. A lot of them also don't though, and some of them aren't the best described. Let's just take this one randomly. Let's see if this one's any good. So we have bug, we have a description, okay, we have this, we have how to reproduce. This is actually a fairly good bug report. But let's say they didn't have logs, or let's say they didn't have reproduction steps, or let's say this was for an old version of Hyperland. This seems to be on... Okay, it's on Nix, so it's probably the latest build. Let's say it was on an older version, and you wanted to see if it could be replicated on a newer version. That is a very important thing, because a lot of the time, users don't include all the information that needs to be included, and when it's not there, there's not really much you can do as a developer. It's all well and good to know, oh, Hyperland crashed, but why did it crash? How did it crash? What was going on in the environment at the time? Does it still crash in a new version? All of this is super important, and you as a random person that wants to get involved in Hyperland can get this information. Pretty much all this requires is some pre-knowledge of Hyperland, like how to get logs, things of that nature. But if you want to get involved in Hyperland, you probably already have some knowledge of Hyperland in the first place. And of course, there's never any harm in monetarily supporting the project because having a bit of extra money to do it is always going to act as a bit of a uh, encouragement, we'll say. And no, I am not quitting. As I've said, Hyperland in its current state cannot continue without me. I've heard many, many times from Hyperland haters that someone should fork the project. But look, the truth is, nobody wants to. It's a massive undertaking to maintain a behemoth like this, especially single-handedly. It's always, someone should fork the project. It's very rarely, I'm going to fork the project. This is also incredibly true when it comes to something like Hyperland. You'll see people say, Oh, somebody should start maintaining Xorg when Red Hat steps away. I have heard some people say, I'm going to start maintaining Xorg when Red Hat steps away. If that's what you want to do, be my guest, go ahead and do it. But I find that hard to believe, considering the fact that if you were interested in doing that support, you probably would be doing so already. So in the case of Hyperland, if you think the Vaxfree is a bad developer and you don't want him to run the project, please go and fork it and maintain it yourself. It'll give him a bit of a holiday. Personally, I'm going to keep Hyperland around for a long time. I am going to try out Plasma 6 when that drops. I don't know if I'll stick around with it. I'm probably going to try Cosmic when that drops as well. We'll see how that goes. But Hyperland is going to be my go-to if I need something that I know basically just works. Most of the time. There are still a couple of issues that we're working through, but most of the time. So let me know. Do you run Hyperland? Have you ever got involved in the project? Have you wrote an issue? Have you got involved in the wiki? Have you wrote a plugin or maybe made a commit to the main project? I would love to know. Or maybe if you want to get involved starting from now. Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, Go like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and Wayland, more like Hyperland.